The repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm is our third algorithm that we are discussing uh, for uh, traveling salesman problems for Hamiltonian graph theory. Um, and the good news is that it's not really a new algorithm. It's essentially the same thing we did on Tuesday, except we will run it more than one time, which will guarantee us at least as good of an answer as nearest neighbor algorithm, but probably an answer that is better than nearest neighbor algorithm, okay? So what we're gonna do uh, here is we're gonna make a little tiny tweak to the nearest neighbor algorithm that we discussed on Tuesday. Um, the way that what we're gonna do is instead of just running the nearest neighbor algorithm from the starting and ending point, we're actually going to run the nearest neighbor algorithm once from every single vertex in the graph. So if it's a K4, we'll run the nearest neighbor algorithm four times, once from each vertex as the starting point. Um, that may on occasion yield the exact same circuit, uh, but chances are good that it'll give you a more than one option for the possible correct answer, for the possible uh, best answer. And as a result, it will actually make the, um, the answer to the problem better than when we're just running the nearest neighbor algorithm by itself. Now, this is not very tricky, uh, but there are a couple things in here that if you're not paying attention, uh, you'll end up getting them wrong on the assignment and that'll end up collating into probably ending up having to redo that assignment because again, you have to get a 70% on the assignment in order for it to count. So there's only one example in these notes because it should only take one example to explain the differences between repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm and nearest neighbor algorithm, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run nearest neighbor once from each vertex in the graph. We will then compare those answers and their weights to choose the best answer out of those options. And if necessary, we would then rewrite the answer that we choose so that it starts and ends at the starting at any point that's given in the problem. And that's the part that will be a little bit tricky, okay? So uh, we are going to go in here and we're going to run the repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm on this graph. This is a K5. Um, so we're gonna run the nearest neighbor algorithm five times, once from each of the five vertices. Okay, and we're going to, for the record, we're going to assume that the problem itself, and I forgot to write this in the notes, has a starting and ending point at E. Okay, that will always be given in the problem, in the directions for the problem. It will say, run the repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm to find a Hamilton circuit, starting from point, and then it will tell you what point to use. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna be starting and ending at point E. And it could be any point, it doesn't matter, okay? That really doesn't change what we do. We are still going to run the nearest neighbor algorithm starting from each vertex. So we'll start with A. Now remember what the nearest neighbor algorithm does is it has us look only at the numbers from A, so 133 to E, 152 to D, 119 to C, and 185 to B. And we want to choose from those four options the lowest number. So that would be from A to C. So we would go from A to C, which is 119, So our first edge we've chosen is from A to C. Now we're at C and we're going to look at the options to travel to places we have not already been. That would be 121 to B, 120 to E, 174 to D. And again, our goal here is to pick the lowest number. So that would mean that we are going to go along the 120 to vertex E. So we'd go to E next for 120. Now we're at E, we still need to go to B and D. So once again, the nearest neighbor algorithm says that we're going to look at our options, 200 and 199, 
and we're going to pick the cheaper of those two choices, which would be the 199. So we travel from E to D for 199. Now, once we get to D, we no longer have to worry about options. We still have to visit every single vertex. Uh, we're getting to that, Delaney. Uh, we still have to visit every single vertex and return to start. So we would go from D to B. for 150 and then we would close the circuit by traveling from B to A which is 185 okay we would add those up so quickly just type those into your calculator that is a weight of 773 Okay. Now, the reason I didn't start at E is because we have to run this from every vertex. So that's one of the five times that we have to run this algorithm. We have to run it from A, from B, from C, from D, and from E, and then compare those answers. So our answer for vertex A is that circuit that is highlighted, A, C, E, D, B, A, with a weight of 773. Now that's the nearest neighbor algorithm run from vertex A. Right, Daniel, right, that's what the difference is. So now we're gonna run it again, only this time we're gonna run it from vertex B, which is where the completed notes will not be very useful because I'm also going to reset my picture and I'm gonna run this whole darn thing again. Okay, starting from B this time. I have a hair on my screen, I gotta get that off of there. Okay, so now we're at B. So once again, what we're doing is we're looking at our options to leave vertex B and go to some other point. We wanna pick the cheapest vertex to visit from vertex B, okay? So the cheapest one would be the 121 to vertex C. So we would travel from B to C. And from C, we have, again, three options. We have 119 to A, 120 to E, 174 to D. And again, we wanna choose the cheapest option. So now we would go from C to A because 119 is the cheapest of those three options. So now that we are at A, we only have two options to consider, 133 to E and 152 to D. Once again, we're gonna choose the cheaper of those two options, which would be to vertex E for 133. Yes, we're still only choosing to go to places we have not been. We're running the nearest neighbor algorithm, just like we did Tuesday, we just have to run it several times. Once we're at E, we don't have options anymore. We have to visit vertex D next. So E to D is 199. And then we have to return to where we started this time, which was vertex B for 150. Now, if you notice, the highlighting guarantees that this is a different or vertex from the uh, previous answer when we started from vertex A. So we add those up, 121 plus 119 plus 133 plus 199 plus 150. That is a weight of 722. So it's a better answer than the one we got when we ran the nearest neighbor algorithm from vertex A. Okay, now we're gonna do that again because we have to do it three more times here. And I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit here on these the next few times here. Um, so 
So now we're going to reset again and we're going to start at vertex C this time. Starting at vertex C, our options are 121 to B, 119 to A, 120 to E, 174 to D. So the cheapest for edge to travel would be from C to A for 119. Then we would go from A to E for 133, because it's the cheapest of our three options there, which were 133, 152, and 185. So from A to E, Okay, then we go from E, we have options of 199 to D and 200 to B. So we would go from E to D for 199, which means we then have to go to B for 150. Because it's the only place we haven't been. And then we have to return to C for 121. Well, that's the exact same circuit we just had a minute ago from vertex C. We already know the weight of that is 722. Okay? So we only have to run this two more times here. We have to run it from every single vertex. So there's C. Now we're going to run it from vertex D. I'll slide this up just a little bit here. Okay. So again, reset, start at vertex D. From D, we would go to B for 150. Because amazingly, 150 is the cheapest edge. From B, we would travel to C for 121. From C, we would travel to A for 119, which would then require us to travel to E next for 133, because that's the only place we have not been, and then back to D for 199 again. So that is also 722, because once again, that is the exact same circuit, just with a different starting point. So that will happen usually. Um, usually at least two, usually more than two of your answers will actually be the same circuit with the same weight. But you have to check. You have to run this from every vertex to make sure that you've gotten every possible choice for repetitive nearest neighbor. So that just leaves starting at vertex E. So starting at vertex E, the cheapest edge would be from E to C for 120. Then from C, we would go to A for 119. Now once we get to A, we still need to go to B and D. D is cheaper at 152 versus 185 to go to vertex B. Then we have to go to vertex B because we haven't been there yet. So that would be 150. And then we have to return to where we started, which is E for 200. So that's a new one that we haven't seen before. We need to add those up. 120 plus 119 plus 152 plus 150 plus 200 is 741. Now, here's the tricky part. Okay, we've done the repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm. We have run it from all five vertices. We have five, although really there's only three answers there, five circuits to choose from. And we need to pick the cheapest one. Well, the cheapest one 
is one of these three because they're all the same vertex, they're all the same, uh, not vertex, same circuit, okay, with a weight of 722. Now here's the tricky part, okay? We have to rewrite that circuit so that it starts at vertex E. So what we do, and this is, the, this is the part, everybody needs to pay close attention here because this is the part that will get you on the homework if you're not paying attention, okay? Um, we go into one of these names. Say we're looking at the first name, B, C, A, E, D, B. And we rewrite it so that it starts at E. So what we do is we go to E, and then we just go through the name, D, B. We go to the other end and we skip the other B because we've already listed that once and then we just keep going, C, A, E. So our official answer to this problem would be E, D, B, C, A, E with a weight of 722. That would be the official answer to the problem, okay? Oops, not what I wanted to do. There we go. I'm trying to get it all on the screen so you guys that like to screenshot can get a good screenshot. Okay, so there is the entire problem written out. Now putting this into Google Forms was kind of a massively huge pain in the butt, okay? Um, all I did to rename that was I went into the middle of the name and I started naming it at E and I just went and circled back around. So E, here I'll do it with a different color here, E, D, B, C, A, E and that gave me my name. You have to rewrite it from E because the problem will specify where that uh, circuit needs to start and end. And I forgot to put that in the directions, okay? But on your assignment tonight, it will say, you know, write the answer from vertex B or write the answer from vertex C. So you might have to rewrite your answer from a different vertex. So that's as simple as going in and saying, okay, well, I need this to start at E, E, D, B, C, A, E, and you've got your name, okay? Right, if you have several of them that have the same weight, like this one where all three of these answers were the same circuit, just pick one of them. It doesn't matter which one and rename it so that it starts at the right place because these three, ver these three uh, circuits are the same circuit, okay? The answer circuit was this circuit. Okay, we named that three different ways, but that is the answer circuit, the green circuit. No, you have to read the directions of the problem to, to figure out where, the, where it wants you to start, okay? And it really doesn't matter until you're writing the answer where the answer needs to be written from because you still have to run it once from each vertex. So you should start off just running the nearest neighbor algorithm one time from each vertex. So run it from A, then run it from B, then run it from C, until you've run it from every point. Once you have all your answers, find the cheapest one and then rewrite it so that it starts where you need it to start, okay? Those are all good questions. Anybody have any other questions before I stop the video? Okay, in the actual Google form, uh, there will be a slot for you to show your work for each vertex. So there'll be a spot to type in what you did for vertex A, what you did for vertex B, what you did for vertex C. And then there will be one more spot where all you have to do is provide the answer. Yes, if you read the problems, it will tell you which vertex to start at. Yes, Adiel, today is your last assignment this week. You're getting two assignments this week. You had one due yesterday and you have one due 
Monday, which you're getting today. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording.